When I was pregnant, my cruel mother-in-law kicked me out of the house and locked the door behind me. She demanded that I transfer this $5 million house to my husband, threatening that I should prepare for divorce otherwise. My husband stood with his mother and did not support me. When I refused, they threw all my belongings out of the house, pushed me back, and said, go away. I felt helpless and left the place. I decided on revenge. I secretly created a plan and took both of them to court, but the court's decision shocked everyone. My name is Lily, and I've always believed that independence was the cornerstone of a fulfilled life. At 35 years old, I was proud of my accomplishments as a real estate agent in suburban Denver. I had worked hard to build my career and save up for my beautiful home, which I bought for $5 million. It was more than just a house to me. It was a testament to my dedication and a symbol of the life I had envisioned for myself. I had always dreamed of a loving marriage. So when I met Ryan, a 38-year-old tech consultant, everything felt right. He was charming, intelligent, and seemed to appreciate my ambition. Our wedding day was a celebration I had long awaited, but little did I know that it would mark the beginning of a dark chapter in my life. On the day of our wedding, I was overwhelmed with joy, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off with Ryan. As I walked down the aisle, I noticed a distant look in his eyes. I brushed it off as typical wedding nerves. After all, we were about to embark on a new life together, or so I thought. After the ceremony, we moved into my home, excited to start our married life. At first, everything felt perfect, but as the days turned into weeks, I began to feel a shift. Ryan became increasingly passive, and his mother, Margaret, a 65-year-old retired schoolteacher, started visiting unannounced, offering critiques about everything from my cooking to my home decor. Lily, dear, have you thought about changing the curtains? They clash with the sofa, she would say, her voice dripping with condescension. I wanted to say something back, to defend my choices, but I held my tongue. After all, Ryan was my husband, and I thought it was just the way families interacted. Maybe I was overreacting. I tried to brush off her comments, but they began to eat away at my self-esteem. I started to question my decisions, my taste, and even my worth as a wife. One afternoon, I sat with Ryan, hoping to express my feelings. You know, I love our home, but your mom's comments are starting to get to me. Can we talk about setting some boundaries? I asked, searching for understanding in his eyes. He sighed, looking away. She's just trying to help Lily. Family sticks together. You know how mothers are. I felt a wave of disappointment wash over me. Was my happiness in this marriage going to be compromised by his mother's opinions? I chose to keep quiet, hoping things would get better with time. The real turning point came unexpectedly. One evening, after a long day at work, I returned home to find Margaret standing in my living room, suitcases piled around her. This is my son's house, too, she announced, as if I should have expected her. I stood frozen, my heart racing. Margaret. What are you doing here? I asked, struggling to maintain my composure. I've decided to move in. You can't expect Ryan to live without his mother, can you? Her tone was matter-of-fact, as if she were discussing the weather. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. But this is my home. We didn't discuss this. Lily, you need to understand that family is important. You knew that when you married him, my world began to crumble around me. I turned to Ryan, desperate for support. Ryan, please say something. This isn't right. He looked torn, glancing back and forth between his mother and me. Mom just wants to help us, Lily. We can make this work. A cold wave of betrayal washed over me. I felt isolated in my own home, as if my sanctuary had turned into a battlefield. The one person I thought would stand by me had sided with his mother. The realization hit me hard. I was fighting for my place in my own life. As the weeks went by, things only got worse. Margaret's presence became a constant shadow, and I began to feel suffocated. I discovered I was pregnant and hoped it would bring us closer together. But when I shared the news, Margaret merely raised an eyebrow and said, You'll need to watch your diet. We don't want any health issues. Even though I longed for support and joy during this time, I was met with cold indifference. 
I often found myself longing for the days when life felt uncomplicated and full of promise. My mind raced with thoughts of how my life had taken such an unexpected turn. One late night, after another exhausting day at work, I returned home, only to find the door locked. I knocked softly, expecting Ryan to let me in. Instead, Margaret's voice came through the door. You're not coming in unless you agree to transfer ownership of this house to Ryan. I felt my heart drop. Margaret, let me in. This is my home. Not anymore, dear. This is my son's house. Either sign it over or I'll call the police. You're trespassing. The reality of my situation hit me like a freight train. I had fought hard for my independence, and now I was being thrown out of my own home. The tears streamed down my face as I realized I had nowhere to turn. I had become a stranger in my own life. As the night wore on, I sat on the porch, feeling the chill of betrayal seep into my bones. I had to think. I needed a plan. It was time to take back control. But I had to do it carefully. I couldn't let them see how vulnerable I felt. I decided to stay with my parents for a while to clear my mind. My father had always been my rock, and I knew they would understand. But the journey ahead was daunting, and I felt like I was standing on the edge of a cliff, ready to jump into the unknown. Little did I know that this leap would lead to a fight for my autonomy, a battle I was determined to win. After that harrowing night, I moved in with my parents. Their house felt comforting, filled with memories of my childhood, yet I couldn't shake the feeling of defeat that loomed over me. My father, a retired police officer, and my mother, a caring homemaker, welcomed me with open arms, but I knew I had to confront my situation head-on. Lily, you can stay as long as you need, my mom said, wrapping me in a warm hug. We'll figure this out together. I appreciated their support, but deep down, I felt a fire igniting within me. I was tired of being a victim in my own life. I needed a plan, and I needed help. That's when I reached out to Sarah, a close friend from college who had become a successful lawyer. She had always been my confidant, and now I needed her legal expertise more than ever. Lily, I'm glad you called, Sarah said when I explained everything. This is unacceptable, and we can fight back. You need to file for divorce. It's the first step in reclaiming your life. Her words rang in my ears like a battle cry. I had been thinking about divorce, but hearing it from Sarah made it feel real. But what if Ryan tries to retaliate? And Margaret, she's already shown how ruthless she can be. Let them come, Sarah replied confidently. You have the law on your side, and the emotional abuse you've suffered is not something to take lightly. We can build a case that highlights their manipulation. Over the next few days, we devised a comprehensive plan. Sarah would help me gather evidence of the emotional abuse and the coercion I faced from both Ryan and Margaret. We would document everything, text messages, voicemails, even the threats I'd received. I began to keep a detailed journal, noting every interaction, every comment that made me feel small and insignificant. One evening, while writing in my journal, I recalled a particular incident that had pushed me over the edge. It was a few weeks before I moved out. I had come home after a long day, tired and eager to share my pregnancy news. Instead, I found Margaret sitting at the kitchen table, going through my personal files. What are you doing? I had asked, my voice shaky with disbelief. Just checking on your finances. After all, you're about to be a mother. It's important to be prepared. Margaret, that's not your place. You have no right to invade my privacy like this. I had protested, feeling the familiar flush of anger rise within me. Your husband's finances are my concern. If he struggles, we all struggle. And we don't want that, do we? She had shot back with a cold smile. I had felt so powerless in that moment. Reflecting on it now fueled my resolve. No more would I allow her or Ryan to dictate my life. As I continued to strategize, I found strength in the realization that I was not alone. Sarah was a steadfast ally, and my parents offered emotional support that I desperately needed. One night, while having dinner with my mom and dad, I shared my plan to file for divorce. I can't just sit back and let them control me anymore, I said, determination in my voice. I want my home back, and I want to be free of their manipulation. My dad looked at me, pride evident in his eyes. 
You're making the right choice, Lily. We'll stand by you every step of the way. The next day, I took a deep breath and walked into Sarah's office to begin the process. My heart raced as I signed the paperwork, feeling a mix of fear and empowerment. This was my first step toward reclaiming my life. In the following weeks, we worked tirelessly to prepare for the court battle. Every day was a whirlwind of emotions as I gathered my evidence and prepared my testimony. I felt like a soldier gearing up for war. Then, the day of the hearing arrived. My stomach twisted with anxiety as I sat in the waiting area of the courthouse, surrounded by other families facing their own battles. My palms were sweaty, and I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. Lily, you're going to do great, Sarah reassured me as she sat beside me, holding my hand. Just remember, you're fighting for yourself and your future. The words resonated with me. I took a deep breath and focused on the outcome I desired. I was done being afraid. I was ready to face Ryan and Margaret in court and reclaim my life. As the judge called my case, I felt a surge of adrenaline. This was it, the moment I had been preparing for. I stepped into the courtroom, ready to confront my past and fight for my future, unaware of the shocking twists that awaited me in the battle ahead. As I stepped into the courtroom, I felt the weight of my decision pressing down on me. The atmosphere was tense, filled with the murmur of other cases and the distant sound of a gavel striking. My heart raced as I caught sight of Ryan and Margaret seated at the front. Ryan's face was stoic, but I could see the tension in his jaw. Margaret's eyes, sharp and calculating, scanned the room, landing on me with a gaze that sent a chill down my spine. Lily, just remember to stay calm, Sarah whispered as we took our seats. We've prepared for this moment. You're not alone. The judge, a middle-aged woman with an air of authority, entered the room, and everyone rose. As she took her seat, I felt my resolve strengthen. This was my opportunity to lay bare the manipulation and emotional abuse I had endured. The proceedings began with the judge asking for an overview of the case. Sarah stood and presented our argument succinctly, detailing my struggles with Ryan and Margaret. She highlighted the emotional distress I had faced, framing it within the context of my pregnancy and my right to live freely in my own home. Your Honor, Sarah began. My client, Lily, is here today to reclaim her life from the grasp of her husband and mother-in-law, who have systematically tried to control her. We have evidence of emotional abuse and coercion that we believe warrants immediate action. I glanced at Ryan, who remained expressionless, but I noticed the way his fingers gripped the edge of the table. Margaret, on the other hand, seemed unfazed, a sly smile playing at the corners of her mouth as she leaned in closer to Ryan. As the hearing progressed, I felt a mix of fear and determination. My stomach churned as I listened to Ryan's lawyer present a side of the story, painting me as an unfit wife who was trying to alienate her husband from his family. Lily is exaggerating her claims to gain control over their shared assets, he argued. But I was prepared. When it was my turn to testify, I stood up and took a deep breath, glancing over at Sarah, who nodded encouragingly. I was excited to marry Ryan and build a life together. I began, my voice steady. But almost immediately, I felt like a stranger in my own home. His mother moved in without my consent and began to dictate how I should live my life. I was locked out of my home after a long day of work, and when I tried to discuss my feelings with Ryan, he chose to support his mother over me. I shared the story of that night when Margaret had locked me out, detailing the threats she made and the helplessness I felt. I could see the judge leaning forward, her expression attentive. I never imagined that I would be fighting for my home and my autonomy. I continued, my emotions surging. This isn't just about property. It's about my identity and my future as a mother. I refuse to raise my child in an environment where I am constantly belittled and controlled. After I finished, there was a moment of silence in the courtroom. The judge scribbled notes, and I could see Ryan's expression faltering. I felt a wave of empowerment wash over me. I had spoken my truth. As the hearing wrapped up, the judge turned to Ryan and Margaret. You both need to understand the gravity of this situation. 
The emotional well-being of a mother and her child is paramount. As we left the courtroom, Sarah squeezed my hand. You did incredibly well, Lily. I think we have a strong case. But as I walked out, I caught sight of Ryan and Margaret whispering to each other, their expressions tense and angry. My stomach dropped. I knew they wouldn't give up without a fight. The looming threat of retaliation hung heavy in the air, but I was ready. I had faced my fears, and no matter what happened next, I was determined to protect myself and my future child. Little did I know, the real battle was far from over. The next twists in this saga would challenge everything I thought I knew about betrayal and revenge. The days following the court hearing were filled with a mix of anxiety and anticipation. I felt like I was on a tightrope, balancing between hope and fear. Sarah and I continued to prepare for the next steps, but I could sense the tension brewing between Ryan and Margaret. They were not the type to back down easily. Then, a week later, I received a call from Sarah. Lily, we need to meet. There's something important I want to discuss. My heart raced. What could it be? I rushed to her office, where she greeted me with a serious expression. I just got word that Ryan and Margaret are planning to fight back. They're trying to discredit your claims, saying you're emotionally unstable and not fit to be a mother. I felt a wave of anger wash over me. They're resorting to lies? I can't believe this. It's a common tactic, Sarah explained, but it shows their desperation. We can counter this. We need to gather more evidence of the emotional abuse you faced. That night, I sat down to write in my journal, recalling moments that had chipped away at my sense of self. I remembered times when I was belittled, undermined, and treated as if I were invisible. With each word, I felt stronger. I was no longer the timid woman Ryan and Margaret thought they could control. The following week, I received a formal notification for another court appearance. My anxiety heightened, but I was determined to face whatever lay ahead. This time, I would not just defend my case. I would stand tall and fight for my future and my child's well-being. When the day arrived, I felt a mix of fear and determination as I walked into the courtroom. Ryan and Margaret were already seated. Their expressions hardened. I could sense the animosity between us. But I was ready. Sarah presented our case once again, emphasizing the emotional turmoil I had endured and how it affected my pregnancy. I had gathered text messages from Margaret, which contained her insults disguised as concerns. I watched as the judge reviewed the evidence, her brow furrowing in concentration. When it was my turn to speak, I took a deep breath and faced the judge. Your Honor, I'm not here to tear apart a family. I'm here to reclaim my life and ensure a safe environment for my child. I cannot allow my mother-in-law to dictate my existence any longer. As I spoke, I could feel the support from my parents who were sitting in the back. Their presence fortified me. I shared the most painful moments, revealing how I felt trapped and controlled, how I was locked out of my home, and how my very identity was being stripped away. The atmosphere in the courtroom shifted. I could see the judge's expression change as she absorbed my words. When it was Ryan's turn to speak, he stumbled over his arguments, seeming less confident than before. Margaret, however, was unyielding, trying to manipulate the situation, but her tactics were losing power. Finally, after a long and exhausting session, the judge called for a recess. As we stepped out, I felt drained but hopeful. A couple of hours later, the judge returned to deliver her verdict. Based on the evidence presented and the testimonies, I find that Lily has been subjected to emotional abuse and manipulation. Therefore, I am granting her full custody of her child and sole ownership of the house. Ryan and Margaret will face penalties for their actions. The words felt like a weight lifting off my shoulders. Relief flooded through me, but I also felt a twinge of sadness for the family I once thought I had. As I exited the courtroom, Sarah hugged me tightly. You did it, Lily. You fought for your rights and you won. With a smile, I whispered, I did it because I believed I deserved better. In the following weeks, I moved back into my home, reclaiming my space. It felt like a fresh start.
I painted the walls, redecorated, and fill my days with preparations for my baby. I was ready to embrace single motherhood and build a life free from the shadows of the past. Looking back, I realized that betrayal had not broken me. It had forged me into a stronger person. I had learned the power of standing up for myself and reclaiming my identity. I was no longer just a victim. I was a survivor. As I cradled my growing belly, I whispered promises to my unborn child. We will build a life filled with love, respect, and strength. You will know that you can always stand up for yourself. In that moment, I understood that this was not just a new beginning for me, but a new legacy for my child, one built on the foundation of empowerment and resilience. I was ready for whatever came next.